We harvest cool weather crops through the winter under double cover in our Zone 5 garden, and I vent all of our cold frames and tunnels manually, but that's not as difficult or time consuming as it might seem. Today I'll share my approach to manual venting, which is both easy and at most takes minutes per day. I keep manual venting as simple as possible by doing two things. First, I only cover our structures from late fall through early spring when freezing temperatures are likely. This reduces the time period over which venting is required. And when the structures are covered, I make at most only two venting adjustments per day, one in the morning and one in the evening. But before talking about venting, let's look at when I apply the two layers of cover. I don't cover our cold frames, low tunnels, and hoop house until plants actually need protection. I add the first layer of cover when temperatures start dipping below freezing. All of our fall and winter crops can handle a light freeze, so there's no reason to rush to cover them earlier. I then wait for temps to dip around 20 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 7 Celsius, before applying the second layer of cover. By waiting for the cold before applying cover, I avoid having to vent during a period in which plants don't need protection anyway. Another benefit is that the cold kills pests. Applying cover earlier, on the other hand, extends the season for pests and allows them to continue wreaking havoc well after they'd ordinarily be killed by the cold. The same principle applies in the spring. I remove the first layer of cover when temperatures are no longer expected to dip below 20 degrees Fahrenheit, and I remove the second layer when freezing temperatures are no longer expected. Again, this limits the amount of time that I have to vent and it also reduces the risk of plants overheating at a time when they don't need protection from the cold anyway. I also keep venting as simple as possible by making at most only two adjustments per day, one in the morning and one in the evening. And many days, depending on the weather, I don't make any adjustments at all. Now let's take a look at how I decide when to vent our hoop house, which gets at least five and a half hours of direct sun in the winter. The criteria that you use to make your decisions may be different based on your climate, the amount of direct sun your garden gets, and the season extension tools you're using, but you should still be able to make only two venting adjustments per day. One thing to keep in mind about my approach is that my goal isn't to create optimal temperatures at all times. Instead, it's simply to protect our plants from extreme heat and extreme cold. In the morning, 20 degrees Fahrenheit is a tipping point for my venting decisions here in the hoop house. If the forecasted high is 20 or higher, I vent. And the sunnier and warmer it's expected to be, the more I vent. Even if it's expected to be cloudy all day and at the lower end of this range, I still vent because in this temperature range, I want to err on the side of venting to avoid overheating. If the forecasted high is less than 20 degrees, I only vent if at least some sun is expected and it's expected to be warmer than 10 degrees. When it's this cold, I don't need to vent much, and I may only vent the inner layer of our hoop house. Now, if it's colder than 10 degrees Fahrenheit, then I don't need to vent at all, even if it's going to be sunny. Though deciding when to vent in the morning can be a little tricky, fortunately in the evening it's very straightforward. If the forecast of low is above freezing, I vent. If it's at freezing or below, I don't vent. It's as simple as that. And all of these changes, both morning and evening, take me only minutes per day to make. And I often go for days on end without making any venting changes at all. For example, in the fall and spring, if we have a warm period where it's consistently above freezing, or in midwinter if we have a cold spell where it never gets above 10 degrees Fahrenheit, over those days, I don't have to make any venting changes. As I mentioned earlier, the specific criteria that I use when deciding when to vent may be different than what you end up using based on your climate, the number of hours of sun your garden gets, and the type of season extension tools you're using. But even so, you should be able to use what I'm doing as a jumping off point and then make modifications based on your own trial and error and observations. The health of your plants will give you some feedback on how well you're doing, but for additional feedback, it's also very helpful to use a thermometer that records max and min temperatures. I'm currently using a remote thermometer with two outdoor sensors. I keep one sensor under double cover in this cold frame and the other in this cold frame. I check the max and min temperatures every now and then, and this gives me feedback on how well I'm doing, and I can make adjustments if needed. If you see temperatures much above 80 degrees Fahrenheit on the max side, you'll want to vent more. 
And if temperatures are much lower than you expect, you want to vent less. Remember, the goal isn't to create optimal temperatures at all times. It's simply to protect your plants from extreme heat and extreme cold. Before closing, I thought I'd talk about why I don't use automatic vent openers. The main reason is that they don't work on all of my structures, including this low tunnel, for example. So I have to come out anyway to vent, and it only takes minutes to vent everything, so manually venting works very well for me. I'd also have to buy a lot of openers, which would be pretty expensive. And I'd have to buy at least two openers for each of my hinge low tunnels to handle the weight. But if you think an automatic vent opener might work for you, it's definitely worth looking into. Just make sure you find one that doesn't require you to remove the power cylinder after temperatures start dipping below freezing. One of those definitely won't cut it in a winter garden. You want one that will continue to open even when temperatures are below freezing. So you can make manual venting much easier and much less time consuming by doing two things. First, only cover your structures from fall through winter when temperatures are below freezing. And second, only make adjustments twice per day, once in the morning and once in the evening. With a little bit of practice, you'll be venting like a pro in no time at all. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos on how to grow a lot of food on a little land without spending much or working harder than you have to. Mm -hmm.